Hi, I'm Susie. Ombres are one of the most beautiful popular designs, but they're hard to do. I'm gonna show you how you can do it without gel, without acrylic, just with nail polish. Beautiful, classic, and simple. Together with my pro tips, you can create this design right at home with polish you can buy locally. Let's have some fun. So I went shopping. I like shopping, especially for nail products. And I was on the hunt for lots of different pinks and nudes because the ombre, right out of the gate, you gotta decide what kind of color you're gonna use. So I picked up a whole bunch and I'm going with the Essie. It's a professional brand. It's a lovely brand to work with. And they had tons to choose from. Get me a trusty little stand here. So I just went down to the regular grocery store that we have here. It's a huge one. And they had a whole nail section and I just bought all this stuff. It's not a sponsored video whatsoever. I'm just showing you guys for fun. So I picked up the Essie base coat. I'm not one to have to have a base coat, especially when you're doing it on acrylic, which is what my nails are. But if you're doing it on natural nails, you might want to include that. And then I grabbed, oh, hang on. I haven't done that in a while. And then I grabbed their speed setting top coat. You can use any top coat. It doesn't really matter when it goes to polish, but it's a good brand. So I thought maybe I'd grab the top coat too. Little boxes are still satisfying to throw. And then they had some oil. Mm, that's nice and oh. Then I thought I'd pick up the oil too, cause it's pretty. I can never have enough oil. I just love the different oils. It smells like apricots, just like it says. Okay, so let's throw on the base coat. I find base coats are really only super important when you're doing it against natural nails. It just helps prevent staining the natural nail, especially if you're using darker colors or staining colors, like a mustard yellow or black or brown or a red bricky kind of color. It can also help a little bit for just having a smooth surface. Now this is nail polish. This is not gel, so we're just going to have to let it have some dry time too. Okay, it's dry. I'm going to try different colors to show you how different it looks with different pinks. Oh, that was number 160. It's called Sugar Daddy. Me, quality polish really relies on the applicator. I tend to not like skinny ones, but this is a skinny one. It's actually going on quite nice. Okay. And the next one is 308 Minimalistic. It's a very strong pink. One of those pinks ugh, that floods in the cuticles and it looks gross like that. These pinks are harder to put on, but they're so pretty when you nail it. Now this one is called Topless and Barefoot 665. It's a nude, so I'm showing you some nudes as well. Again, skinny brush, not a fan, but every time I've used them, they actually don't go on too bad. I find it's just easier with a bit of a fatter brush. That is gorgeous. I'm just a nude freak. I love that. For my nails, that is. Thank you for qualifying that. Yeah, we don't want to go there. It's not a good look for me. Okay, this one is 096 Ballet Slippers. What an adorable name. It's very, very whitish almost. Very nude. So you're just comparing all the different colors then, just to see what they look like? Well, comparison. just because your background makes all the difference. Right. Of how the white is going to look. Just, you know, whatever taste you like. I tend to like it a bit pinker. 
Okay, so I'm not going to do the thumb in the photo because it just never really makes the photo that well. It's always tucked in behind, but I got to show you this color because I absolutely fell in love with it. Mindful Meditation, and it's 071. I just love nudes. So for me, this color is like right up my alley. Okay. So, but I have to double coat them all again because we want that more of intense pink. Although this is going to be really bright on that one, but let's just give it a good double coat. I just need this to dry a tiny little bit. Now the whites that I've selected, I have got Marshmallow 024 and they've got Blank 008. Blanc. Okay. <laughs> I'm not that sophisticated. So this one is like a real white, like a white out white. It's quite nice white. This one's much more gentle and much softer. You want a ton of these. They are they're makeup sponges. So I just got a whole bag of them because I didn't know how many we were going to use. We were going to get into it. So I'm just going to take out a whole bunch because I might have different ones that I want to try, right? And while I was there, I grabbed some of these. And these are just great for removing makeup and nail polish. This is a great quick way to do this if you want an ombre and you don't do acrylic, you don't do gel, and you just want to go out for dinner and you want an evening out and you want to get an ombre look. This is, I find, a really effective way. So you get these little sponges and you don't want to make it wet like you would with makeup or, or anything else. You just want to keep them totally dry. So we're putting that pink up there. And we'll put the white down below. This is our ombre. And I'll take the pink again just to blend it over the two of the white. This guy a bit. And I'm just going to dab this on ever so gently. Now again, if you do it too much, it's going to start to dry and it's going to pull back. That's actually really pretty. So let's see if we can put some top coat on there. See how it softens? It's really pretty. And be careful because this is all full of stuff now. So put that aside so you don't get it all everywhere. And this was the first one that I put on. So let's give a second coat. sure if I should do the photo with all these being ombre or just show the different colors to you and then remove them all and just do the one that I like so they all look the same. That would look nicer, wouldn't it, Caramel? Um, yeah, good. I think so. Okay, see this darker one? The darker nude? So let's get this on here and see how it blends nicely together. You guys, you can do this with any color. Obviously, you know, blacks and reds. You can do it anything you want. You're the artist. It's so great because you can just buy this at the store. You guys don't have to. This is not professional. I mean, this is a professional line, actually. Essie's a really nice line. It's been around for as long as I have been doing nails. And uh, it's so nice to see it, actually, in the store. Okay. It's really where you hit it too. You've got a, I don't like the ombre coming up too high. It's all personal taste. And then I'm going to hit the white just on the end, just to do it softly. Yeah, that's pretty. And I'm going to get that top coat on there. Now again, I'm using a really strong white out type of white. You want a softer look, you can use um, even a softer white. Okay, so let's do the pinky with that pretty color. I believe that was ballet slippers. Very light color. 
You could just do the white, but it is nice to do the blend sometimes with the two together. I'm not going to use the marshmallow color in between because this um, ballet slippers is such a light color as it is. So I don't really want to blend it that much. You want to be able to see that white. Might be harder to see the white because it's such a light color. Okay, let's try the pinky. So you want it to be kind of whiter because it is such a light base color. Now, do you have to be careful not to smear it or? That's the idea. I'm trying to a little. Oh. Right, of course. Right. So in this I'm case, trying smearing to... is good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is when it actually works to my uh -huh. advantage. <laughs> okay. I mean, you can see that it's a little, you can see the pattern of the sponge a little bit. But, um, I mean, when you're having a glass of wine and you're out dancing, whatever you're doing, you're not going to analyze it like that. I mean, this is a kind of a quick and dirty way to get a nice ombre on there. When I bend it back like that, I'm just trying not to get the line of the other one up there. I think that looks really pretty. Okay, so why don't we do a picture like this, and then I should do a picture of one color that I pick, that I like, that I do right. Okay, those are pretty, aren't they? But I want to have a uniform shot, because I wouldn't do this on a client, a whole bunch of different ones. I'm going to pick my favorite color, and I'm going to go ahead and do them up. It's ready for my close-up. So the, the verdict is in. Clearly, I do it much faster and better when I'm not talking. Let's check out the reveal shots. So there is a few colors you can choose from to get a different look of an ombre. It actually goes quite well. That's beautiful. I love it. Great. Okay. Let's take a few minutes for a couple of questions. I got a great question. Hi, my name is Lou and I'm 13 and I'm inspired to work as a nail tech. My only question is how do I decide between acrylic or gel or both? First 20 years of my career, I mastered the acrylic. I just focused on it. That's all there really was, to be honest with you. Gel didn't come in until late 80s, early 90s when they made it really good. And I started only revisiting gel about 2000 something. But I made my whole living on acrylic and I because I, that's all I did. I got really good at it. But I learned that as a nail technician running a salon, more clients were coming in more and more asking if we did gel in the salon. Well, we didn't at that point. And then I realized we're pretty much kissing away 20% of the industry because gel was up and coming. So I started to learn to gel. So then we stopped turning people away and we took all. So from a business point of view, if you can learn to do them both, great. But I would focus on one first and then move on to the other. Personally, I would start with acrylic and then move to gel. And I won't tell you why. I'll save that for later. Good question, Lou. Tommy says, what are the greenies? Yes. Okay. Greenies is a slang term of what we get is a green icky kind of discolorization on the nail bed. I believe it's pronounced pseudomonas as a professional name, which is meaning the greenies. A lot of people think that is a mold and it is actually not a mold. It's a gross thing that grows underneath the nail when the water and moisture is trapped 
with acrylic or gel. Actually, some people can get it on their natural nails, even on their toenails, and they have nothing on. So the product isn't to blame, but product can, if not applied properly or not removed properly before we put new stuff on, can instigate it to come on, especially if people are gardening and they're gluing and they're bacteria and they're trapping everything in there and they're going too long in between fills. It is a perfect environment for something like that to grow if the bacteria is there to grow. That's why it's a it's a loaded question, Tommy. It's a great question. I could do a whole um, workshop on it. The most important thing about not ever getting the greenies is to making sure any lifted area has always come up. We cleanse the nail, disinfect before we put new product on. That's how to avoid the greenies slash pseudomonas. Okay, so let's say you're getting the greenies and it usually starts with a bit of a brown or a yellowy kind of mark. You can take off the lifted product cleanse the area, disinfect, and you can put new product on. Only when you don't want to pursue after you get the greenies is when it gets so dark and like a blue-green deep into the natural nail. It doesn't smell. It doesn't hurt. You don't want to put any product on top of that. Let it grow out because it's a very weak foundation of your natural nail that's kind of gone a little mushy. Let that grow out, and it will. As soon as you take it off and disinfect it, it stops growing right from that point, okay? It's gross, but... It rarely happens. It happens, though. Great question, Tommy. Mad-Eye, I don't know why I find it so funny that the auto captions say snailcareer.com. Okay, well, what does that mean? It means it's the way you say it. The com- Google's AI oh, thinks you're saying the word snail. I see. It's nail. an auto thing where it's just thinking, yeah. well, I kind of slur my words sometimes. There I go. I just did that. So I guess that's why I picked up on that. That's really funny. I didn't even know that. And she's got little pictures of snails. That's very cute. Thank you. (laughs) I'll try not to slur and maybe that won't happen anymore. So from Shax123100 says, question, my gel extensions stay on forever, but not my acrylic. I have very small nail beds. Is that the problem or is it something else? Uh, The size of nail bed won't have any bearing on it whatsoever. Um, In my opinion, if your gel extensions are staying on forever and not my acrylic, there's so many variables, sweetie, so I don't exactly know why. But I'm going to say if you are having a different gel artist do comparison to the acrylic that you had put on, if they're two different nail technicians, that very well could be in itself. That's the answer. One is just better at prepping that natural nail bed than the other. That is probably 75% of the answer. So I'll leave that there because I'm pretty sure that's what the problem is. If there's two of the same artists doing it, one, they might not be good at doing both of those, but it will be in the preparation of the nail and how thick or thin they're putting the actual product on your nail, okay? But it's most likely uh, the procedure with them. Now the cat wants back in, can you guys believe that? Great question. Oh, I guess that's all the questions we have. Excellent. Well, thanks for joining me, you guys. Just in time for Critter, he wants to get in. I'll catch you guys in the next video. See ya.